Well, <laughs> Luigi Del Bianco uh, is my father, and I'm his daughter. I'm Gloria Del Bianco. One of the things I remember was I was about 16, and um, Borglum, Gus and Borglum's son was on To Tell the Truth. You're kidding. <laughs> this TV show that was oh, yeah, on sure. in whatever year that was. Yeah. And the phone started ringing at the house. The phone was ringing off the hook. People were calling, you know, because Borglum son, Lincoln Borglum, was on to tell the truth. Once the show was over, um, we called New York. Um, I think my brother Caesar called New York and got through to the show and got Lincoln on the phone. And of course Lincoln was... Um, I, I don't know what, what happened in the conversation, but I remember my father speaking to him. And there was such joy in my father's voice uh, reaching Lincoln, I guess, after many years. And uh, they had a f um, very significant conversation, um, and, and there was a lot of emotion in the house at that point, you know, because they were... He basically raised Lincoln, or helped to raise him, during the time that he was working on Mount Rushmore. Oh, really? So, in what way? Well, I don't know the details of that relationship as far as raising him, but um, I know that he was much younger, and he was working on the mountain, you yes. know? Yes, yes. He was the, uh, I think he was the, I'm not, I'm not going to say exactly what Lincoln did, but I believe something to do with the pointer. Yeah, he was a chief pointer. Chief pointer. And... Um, he learned and uh, yes. respected my father and worked with him. Yes, he took him under his wing. He I took did. him under his yeah, wing. Yeah, that's right. And, and he was like his son, you know, on the mountain. Got it. And uh, I remember... Mm, the daughter with a father, uh, his personality, his, uh, his well, artistry. You know... How would you describe him? Oh. With charming. One-word adjectives. Charming, charming. and, and um, spirited and... Very handsome. Yeah. And funny. Very funny. Okay. You are Vincent Del Bianco. Is that true? Right. <laughs> Can you tell me, is it true that Nana used to cook uh, macaroni for the Native, for the Indians? Yeah. Well, they tell were, me about that. What do you remember about that? She used to that? make the sauce for them. And then she'd give them the macaroni and just cook it themselves. Where did you go to meet the Native Americans? Were they on a reservation? Yeah, were they on a reservation? And how and how close were they to the mountain? Oh, a mile or so, right there, right in the park. And why did you go to visit them? Well, we just a couple of them worked for my father. So they, they used to go there and make little por portraits of them, of the Indians. So Grandpa got along well with the Native oh, Americans. Oh yeah, they loved them. Why do you think they loved them? Because he was he was good to them. Why do you what in what way? Uh, well, he wasn't like uh, the Indians out there. Uh, nothing. Right. Nothing. And the people out there they shun him. But my father used to get right in there with him. He'd make the sauce and bring it to him and they'd go back around. Yeah, my mother used to go with him too. They had a big council with a uh, building. And they'd eat uh, like a dining room. Huh. She'd cook three or four pounds of macaroni. She had all the sauce and they'd all eat there. Maybe 40, 50 and white kids. What do you think Borglum's opinion of Grandpa was? Oh, high, very high. Yeah. He listened to everything my father told. What do you he mean he listened? Him, he used to ask him questions about how they should do this, how they should do that. So Borglum used to go to Grandpa for advice yeah. about carving, of course. He used to go up on the mountain with my father and together did engineer the job. So Borglum went to Grandpa for advice on the... Everything was, what do you think, Louie? Yeah. What do you think? Think we should do it this way or that way? I remember. He was a good man, Borglum. Grandpa, uh, did Grandpa ever complain about the mountain to you, even years later, about... Did he ever complain about All it? All the time. I, about what? 
he used to disagree with Borgen. He always got his way, but he always convinced Borgen he was right. What did he disagree with him about? Oh, certain shots in the mountain, how they should place it. That what, was it mostly. What do you mean by shots? Well, just draw it on a board first, where they make a model of it. Yes. And that's how they get it from there to there. And you and and he would have uh, arguments with Borg. Oh, fights of Christ the Lion. Really? Borg would say, Jesus Christ, you're stubborn, Louis. Bianco, you're stubborn. My father says, I gotta be stubborn with you. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, Borg but they got along good. No, no, I, I, Grant, how did Grandpa feel about Borgman? Oh, he was the master. Right. Borgman was the master. Was there an affection there? Don't, shoot, don't say anything wrong about Borgman. Uh -huh. He loved Borgman. He loved him. Uh, why do you think he loved him? Because he admired him, I reckon. Right. He respected him. Oh, sure. And, and Borgman was the master. He was the master. Would you like to introduce yourself to everyone? Tell them who you are. I am Cesar Del Bianco. My father was Luigi Del Bianco, the chief carver on Mount Rushmore. And um, where do you come from in Westchester? Portchester, New York. I was born there in 1931. I'm 76 years old. Different. Do you remember when you uh, read Rex Allen Smith's book and how you felt? Well, when I felt that, when I, when I found out my father was not uh, not in the book. I said that's like having, like that's, that's like having Joe DiMaggio on the team. Right. And he wasn't there. Right. It's crazy. He was out of, without a doubt outside of that's important, the most important man, Barnum. I decided to to go to Washington and to deal with the Borgland papers. There would be everything that was carvable on, on those papers. And I found a lot of stuff on my father. I have a lot of great pages of work on the mountain talking about my father. Right. It must have been pretty exciting to, to make some of these. It was the most exciting thing of my life. I wasn't dealing with just a, a carving on a mountain, and I was dealing with a, the United States of America mm. and the carving that he made famous on Mount Rushmore. In other words, without, without Guts and Borgham, there would have definitely been no Mount Rushmore. Or anything you want to say about Guts and Borgham? I think he was one of America's greatest sculptors and it has yet to be proved. He made some great, great work of, a, of, good, of, good, of very good carving. Yes, we saw the, uh, the bust of Lincoln in uh, yeah. Statuary Hall in Washington right. when we went together. Right. And we found this to be a great piece of work. Right. Well, there's no doubt about Guts and Borgham's stature in the, in the art world. He was one of the greatest, bar none. Well, according to my father, he even got his way with Borglum. Well, he probably did, because mm -hmm. grandpa, my father was a strong, strong-willed man. Didn't take no for an answer. Mm. What he wanted, he got. Got it. Because he could prove that he could do what he wanted. And that's why he was so well-liked. Um, when he said he could do something, he did it. Yeah. You know, everybody to just uh, say goodbye? Well, we'll see you in the next trip. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Well put. Okay. Ciao.